Hello, everyone. Uh, before I get started in this presentation, I just want to say a bit of thanks to Mike and the automation, uh, Chainlink automation team for being able to make this happen for us to come and talk today. And I guess we might as well just jump straight into it. So, my name's Lucas Hobbs. I'm one of the team here at Gravity Finance. And you're probably wondering what we do. I'll jump into that in probably just a bit. Before you know what we do, let's have a look at a bit of our brief history. Gravity Finance as a concept was very much born in 2020 and very much from the frustrations of DeFi summer and all of those exorbitantly high gas fees to try and even get in to earn some yield potential. We just thought to ourselves there has to be a better way to go around and doing this. This kind of led us down the route of our fee distribution model that we have now. Uh, so all of our products that we have across the board all earn admin fees. These admin fees are distributed to the holders. So this is a fully distributed product. Anybody that owns our token will get an even split of those fees. But the biggest thing that we like to do is provide no staking. And so you can earn these admin fees and redeem these admin fees via our smart contract anywhere. There's no staking required. There's no uh, liquidity pools that you have to put your... Uh, gravity into, and you can just keep them in a cold wallet or a hot wallet, which I think is pretty cool. This is just a bit of a general screenshot from my website there. This shows just all of our standard products. We've got the standard things like the swapping exchange, you know, general dashboard to locate things like liquidity pools and farms. We've just recently launched vaults, but we've also just got silos, which is what I'm here today to talk about and what they actually do, harnessing the pain link, uh, power of chain link automation. This is probably the most important slide to me standing up here, and this is our partners and collaborations. Uh, with our product, we are very dependent on all the other people in the DeFi space to work with. You know, so once again, special thanks to Chainlink and everything that they do with us with this automation project, and also a special shout out to the Chi Dao, who's also, you know, we like to work very closely with, and I'm very grateful for having along that route, and everybody else there as well, not just them, but also more, really grateful. So in terms of DeFi accessibility and automation, I think that uh, to make a, a, a product that's accessible, you also need to make it usable as well. And I think this is one of our core values here at Gravity. And being able to make complex things that maybe only the experience can do and bring that down to a basic level in which anybody, you know, mum or dad or, you know, grandma or investor can essentially tap into and harness the power of in the DeFi ecosystem because necessarily or normally it's pretty hard to do. This kind of brings us onto silos and what we like to call DeFi 3.0 ourselves. Typical DeFi 2.0 that I'd look at is your standard DeFi ecosystem that ex exists there. Our silos essentially exist on top of that and allow us to tap into these strategies with using Chainlink automation to do extra DeFi tasks that you might not normally do. So for example, you might want to be using an optimization uh, strategy where you're borrowing funds and running a collateral to debt ratio. And you might not be able to do this typically as a manual user because you have to constantly monitor it and risk things like liquidation. But with Chainlink Automation, we look for these parameters and make sure that certain events can't happen or certain events will happen to protect your funds and keep things safe. Uh, it's also a non-custodial NFT deployment when it comes out. So this is something that the user owns and retains, which also means they're the only people that can access these silos once they're deployed. So this can look a little bit confusing, but a bit of a general rundown of Chainlink automation. I thought I might give you a quick talk about that because in terms of how it works can be a little bit uh, difficult for some people to understand. I've tried to simplify this in the terms of, on the left here, this is all of our off-chain variables that could potentially exist. For this presentation, I've just used uh, lyrics to risk As Rick Astley's never going to give you up. But we, with Chainlink Automation, will have a bunch of parameters or, you know, if things happen, do this, that we search for. And once that certain parameter is hit, we can essentially trigger that on-chain transaction. So we scoop up anything from the off-chain monitoring and push it onto the on-chain, which will then actually trigger that process to happen on the network there. So we found never going to run around and desert you. So that means we're going to print Rick Astley on the other side there and actually going to start that interaction there. So this is where we talk a bit more about silos, loan op optimization and liquidation prevention. Like I've just mentioned there, Chainlink Automation monitors every block. This is something that's actually quite hard to do, and the fact that it's in a decentralized network as well is really beneficial to us. This would have been six plus months to build something like this ourselves, and it wouldn't have been decentralized. So, you know, the complexities of automation make this so much easier for us to be able to deliver this to the end, end user, and that's really good. In terms of silos use cases, there's plenty of different use cases to look at. This is probably my favorite, which would be the collateralized loans and dollar cost averaging. 
But the biggest thing about silos is that it can give the user sort of any type of strategies that they want to build up onto. If they want to send funds to another silo or do something else with it, they can have that full user freedom there as a retail product. This is a picture of our website. So this is just our standard silos that's currently in beta. You can actually go along, have a look at all the different strategies, hover over the tool tips, figure out what might be useful to you and what you might want to do with it. For the example of this uh, presentation, I'm just going to be looking at the swap and claim, which is just a simple DCA tool. Before we enter into a silo, we actually open up a silo manager and we deposit a bit of chain link. So when we're actually printing Rick Astley's out into the world and making those uh, verifications, the chain link nodes are actually paying for the gas up front and then we actually contribute to those gas nodes with our chain link. So when we're starting a silos manager, we're actually starting our own chain link automation account, which is pretty cool. And we've got tool tips there to better show the user what they're sort of doing there and all of that. But realistically, if you don't rather read them, you don't have to. This is our standard DCA silo. So as you can see, it can be pretty complex. All of this is just explaining to the user what's actually happening. But what I think is really cool is the silo parameters that you see on the right-hand side. This is just an example of some of the things that you can do once the silo has been deployed. So for example, in this strategy, we're dollar cost averaging into Chainlink. I'm buying $10 every single day of that. That's my funds. This is an actual silo I've deployed myself. We've actually set the purchase schedule to daily. And we're actually going to retain 100% of that Chainlink in our silo. There's other options as well that you could do there. So if you had another silo that was using Chainlink to earn yield, you could actually forward all of that Chainlink onto another silo. Or if you wanted to send it to an address like mum or dad's wallet, or you know a fund for the kids to save up for school, you could do that as well. This is just a bit of a rundown of silos interoperability, or what I like to call silo stacking. Uh, this is just you know an example of something you could do with the power of silos when you start stacking them on top of each other and putting those developments together. So at the top, we've got a USDC and DAI pool. So that's got an LP silo that's earning a nice APR. That's great. All of that yield that is being generated, we're actually forwarding with the silo down into our rental property portfolio with our friends be for real there. And that rental property portfolio is actually earning us rental income. So what do we do with that rental income? Well, we could harness the power of compounding interest and send some of that back up into that LP silo and keep that rhythm going around. Or what we could do is send half of it off up into our Cypher D wallet address, and you could start using those fees that are being generated from your rental property portfolio to use things like pay for a mortgage or pay for your groceries or do something like that. But most importantly, you could use some of that income to DCA into a silo to buy a bit more of your favorite token or do anything there. And then from there, the endless possibilities is really as much as what you want to do with it. So this is probably a slide I should have talked about a little bit earlier, but when we start getting into those more risky automated uh, products, we like to use something called active risk management. This is very much to monitor and constantly have a good collateral to debt ratio when we start borrowing funds and leveraging ourselves in positions to help stop and prevent liquidation. So this is very much to help reduce mask market risk across the board for standard products that people are using. And the ability to avoid that liquidation is you know, immeasurable in terms of you know, protecting user funds because at the end of the day, this is a retail asset for anybody to use. We are in the finance space. Protecting user funds is probably one of the most important things out of our whole product here and active risk management working with Chainlink and their automation is accomplishing this, which I think is really awesome. Now, in terms of third-party utilization, the, the, the glory about this is that you can use silos for yourself on a personal level. If you've got a DAO or a company or you want to do something with silos, you can build on top of them as well. So you come and have a chat to our team afterwards or check out our website or our Discord and have a talk about how you might utilize a silo in something you do. For example, this is Smart Vault that we've been working with. They're actually just a general portfolio management uh, company that essentially use NFTs uh, to you know, behind backed crisp, uh, crypto assets that you can invest into. Uh, and they're going to be using some of the silos for their products, but the brilliance of that is it's not going to be for all of their product. It'll be what suits them. And they're picking out the silos that match what they need to do to meet their business goals and protect user funds, which lines up with their risk analysis. So before we go forward into anything else as to what we might be getting into, it's always good just to look back. This is our 2022-2023 roadmap. We never updated this from what the original roadmap was. So it's a good chance for us to be able to look back and go, what have we accomplished? What have we moved forward? And it gives us time to sort of look back and sort of see where we're heading in the future as well. If you're interested in anything that we might be getting up to outside of silos or the future of silos or what we're trying to accomplish, once again, have a, come and have a chat to our team. Check out the Discord and look at the website as well. And that leads me to my last, last slide here. I want to just leave that up for a little bit. 
because I think when you look at all of the things that are happening in the automation space, it, things take a really long time to build, but it's not impossible. Building and automating anything can be done, it's just a matter of figuring out how. Thank you very much, thank you very much everyone.